Okay guys, welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. This is going to be a raw live edit. Got a whole load of products here. <laughs> Let's keep them in the keep them in shop while I talk about them. Um, Adams Revive Hand Polish. Koch Chemi Micro Cut and Finish. So a finishing polish with um, wax in it. Meguiar's 3-in-1 Wax. So three in one cleans polishes and protects poor boys poor boys black hole built hember cleanser polish um so it's like a abrasive with acrylic resin and you know some solvents to clean the paint i think and then bright max virtue which is a silica primer polish so these are quite funky these are quite funky so they claim to use a more durable resinous material you know that's compatible with ceramic coating so you can lay a coating on top of them um, or you can lay an SiO2 spray on top of them and all that sort of stuff so they're quite interesting products I know Brian from Detailing World likes this I've had it for ages just never got around to testing it I don't just make sure oh yeah okay I haven't got a crack any seal off of it or anything like that what we're going to do in this video, guys, <coughs> this video is not a high quality test. I've got a battered roof up here. You can, if I'm very slow, you can see all the swirls. You can't see them. Like I say, there's all these fine swirls that you will not be able to see. You'll just see some. But if I get really close. Now, this camera is just rubbish at showing swirls. It's battered. Take it from me. Covered in swirls. Um, now, I'm also, I'm just really going to use, I'm just doing this comparison for me. And I'm going to be using one pad, which is controversial. Really, I should get out, you know, six pads for each so I don't cross-contaminate and all that. I'm more just interested in, in using these and having a look. So let's get stuck in. Um, so we're going to start with Adam's hand polish. We're going to be using all these by machine, and we're just going to be doing six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six swipes up and down. Um, we're going to use relatively small amounts, so three small dots. And we'll work section by section. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Yeah. That'll do. Right. So let's fire this up. Okay, so here we go. Speed three on the machine as well. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that simulates a hell of a lot of rubbing that you're never going to really be able to do with your hand. And um, I'm going to just leave that product now to haze off because that's what I think you're supposed to do with it. So allow it to dry for a few minutes. You can use detail spray to remove it or just wipe it off. Okay, so that's the Adams Revive hand polish. Now, what I'm going to do is just stop the camera and just go and flush that rubbish out of the pad. So I'll be back in a second, okay? Okay guys, I just flushed the product out and I crammed the pad in a microfiber towel over there to dry it off. Next up, micro cut and finish from Kochi. Recommendations for use, wet, new or dry micro cut pads completely a oh, wet new or dry micro pads spread the polish evenly it's interesting so you can use it wet so that means it's a there's a water based component to this that's nice i've never used this one before not p this is a new one it used to be p201 read the rest of the instructions as well john <laughs> right shake before using 
check suitability and compatibility. Do not use a hot surface. Protect against excess heat. Here we go. Switch the machine on and apply polish crosswise with medium pressure. Remove polish. Okay. So just polish. Just, just <laughs> use the bloody stuff. Okay. Let's give it a really good shake. It's quite a lot. Dab that out. Okay. Let's go over here. We'll just do the same kind of technique. I'll just spread it. I'll just do one pass to spread and then I'll do my six strokes. Okay. On. Oh. Uh, there we go. One. That's one. That's two. Three. Four, five, six. Okay, quite a lot of polish there. Be fine. I'm just going to let all of the polishes dry, and I can then compare how they are to buff off as well. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is just go and rinse this pad out. I'll be back in a second. Okay, guys, we're back. That cotch flushes out the pad nice nice it's nice when the water you can sort of see it dissolve and break down the polish rather than repel the polish so a watery kind of polish is nice in some ways although old school water carried polishes used to dry up too quickly but these modern ones don't so that's what you want a water-based one that doesn't dry up on you right harmful to aquatic life Maguire's have, they sell it in so many countries, they have to give you, you get a Bible with every single product. Uh, I'm not moaning, that's, just, that's fine. But these books aren't great, are they? they? Sort of rip off the bottle and stuff. Well, where's the instructions? Dutch, German, English, here we go. Apply to a small amount of product, that place pad, work it in. Apply product more if needed. Continue applying the product, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once it's dried, remove with a high quality microfiber. Okay, <laughs> so stick stick some on the pad, work it in, let it dry, buff it off. Okay, well, you gotta be careful with that. Let's just close that again, look at that. Little dribbly lid, it's all right. These, these, I mean, there's a bit of dribble there, I suppose. So there's no perfect lid, is there? But these can fart out on you a little bit, you gotta be careful. I like this product, bloody expensive. As with, you know, Meguiar's, I love Meguiar's products. Um, well, not all of them, but I love their abrasives and I love their sealants. Um, they buff so nicely off the panel. But they're really expensive in the UK. Um, so I'm just using a small amount here. That's actually plenty. So let's set that down. Can you see? Should be able to see. All right, set that in. I'm going to do one pass just to work it and then count six. All right, let's count six. One. Two. Let's get a better angle so you can see it. Three. Four. Five, six. Okay, it's a bit wet that pad. It's fine though, it's fine. Interesting, no problems. No problems. Okay. Uh, now let's go and wash this off. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, next up, poor boy's black hole. In fact, before we do that, it's right here, Megs. And then, poor boy. What's next? Built hamber. I'm going to run out of space here. BH. 
and then bright max. Okay. Oh, can't you see? Can't you see? Let's get those the right way around. So, poor boy's next. Been around for donkey's years, this black hole. Um, bulb to polisher, allow. Apply to a dry foam pad and prime the pad with a small amount of product. Apply a small circle around the pad, yeah, yeah. Spread at a low speed until it's been covered. Continue until a shine begins to appear. Okay, and allow black hole to haze and then buff off. All right, so just spread it out. But basically do the same thing. <laughs> the pad, okay, pad should be bone dry. So it's not, okay? So um, this is not that formal a test. I'm doing this primarily for myself, just to learn a bit about these products. This is not some formal thing. Okay, a small amount. We've shaken that up. Let's go. Put that there. I'm probably not going to see this. Are so there we go. Right, one pass just to spread it, and we count to six. Get on there, John. Tell it on, you wish. Right, here we go. One. No, sorry, that's the pass. This is the first one. So that's one. Two. Three, four, yeah, it's starting to thin out this one, five, nice though, six, oh, just bring it back, I can't, what did I count correctly, and I finished at that end rather than that end, okay, it's only rough, so it's quite thinner that, I could see through it, kind of translucent, I think, if, like they say, if I'd have kept going with it, it had been glossy, so it's probably more resiny. Feels more more acrylicy and less abrasivey. So probably a classic glaze. So I'm just, if you have a look, you can see that's the product product residue. You can still see a bit of shine beneath it. The more you work it, the more it thins out. So it's less abrasive and more acrylicy. Meg's quite abrasive. Koch very abrasive. And Adams, well, yeah, there's abrasives in there. The Adams ones, it says, contains no wax or polymers. So maybe it's just a sort of polish. You know, if it doesn't contain wax or polymers, then what's left? Abrasives. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? So I'm not sure. But the Adams product is a product that I've kept. Because I like it. You just buff your car with it. It makes it look nice. And then you can put a wax on top. You need a product like this. And that's why I'm doing this kind of test. Just to um, sort of think which hand polish do I want to keep. Um, there's also obviously super resin polish in there as well. And I've got a bottle of that in the cupboard. But it's about 10 years old. Um, and they've changed the formula now. So I should really go and buy a new bottle of super resin polish. I'm hoping though that this one will do the job for me. Because I like the built handbook products. And it's, you know, the less brands I can use, <coughs> the better. And I'm tying in with these existing kind of products that are all designed to work with each other. Each brand obviously makes its own products and they all work with their own products. So when you're comboing stuff, there's risks of bad results. Or when you're using products as intended by the, the brand, you've got more chance of getting good results, I think. So a, there is a lot to be said to using as few, few brands as you can and, most of my stuff from wash decon polish is built hamber and cotch um you know that's just what i've after chest testing all this stuff i want to try you know there's some other very good brands out there in fact that bright max really good underrated brand i know one of my patrons dave in america you can buy it all really really cheap from uh what's it called What's the company called? What's the company called? Auto Geek. You can get like 40% off all the Primax stuff. So he was like bulk buying it all. And I think they realized they were giving it away. Stop doing that. Um, anyway, stop chatting. Let's uh, turn this off, clean this, and then go on to the next one. Okay, we're back. We're back. So next one, let's get these bendy legs sorted out. I mean, on the tripod, not me. Give this a shake. 
wash vehicle apply to light medium pressure allowed to dry haze okay done um no you know no decent thing they, they could do with one of these on this bowl that fit on there holy cow that fits <laughs> i might just leave that on there i must have a spare one of those kicking around somewhere that's much better um you know things i've said a few times with bill Hamper, i can't really I struggle to find fault with their products because their products are just awesome and, and very good value. Very, no no sort of bling, no sense. They're not foamy thick products. They are functional products. Um, but a bit like with our shampoo, they could just have a think about the user kind of experience there and with this polish. Okay, it's not such a bad thing if you're applying it with a rag and you just start tipping it on, but loads of polish is going to come out with this so like uh, already yeah, I'm having to do things that are alien and that's not good um, so yeah they could think about things like that in fact I am gonna go out my way now come, come here I'll show you a secret look at <laughs> the forensics odds and sods bag ow I caught myself in the older collegias there must be a decent lid in here somewhere Ah, 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 I knew it. There, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, let's see, that should go on there. There you go. Fixed. Oh, well, you can't squeeze it, can you? You can't squeeze it. That's why they've done it. Because you can't squeeze it. So maybe it'll work without it. Let's just try. Oh, it does. Hey. There are but you can't squeeze, that's a bit funky. I knew there'd be a reason why they didn't put one of those, <laughs> those uh, one of these on there. Right, I'm gonna go back to what was on there before. So, Bill Hamber, if you're watching, squeezy bottle would be nice with a, with a nipple. <laughs> okay, let's crack on, John, crack on. Go mad, right. Okay, so let's put this down. Oh, don't cross contaminate. Go over here a little bit. Right, and we do one one spread and then six swipes. So here we go. One. I think that's more abrasive than the poor boys. Two. Three. Uh, 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 uh. Four, uh, 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 uh. five, uh, 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 uh. six, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Do you remember the count from Sesame Street? What a nutter he was. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's the built hammer. Right. I'm going to stop the camera and go and flush this out. They've all been good to flush out so far. Okay guys, we're back. Now we're on the last one, which is the Brightmax Virtue Silica Primer Polish. Shake well, clean and dry with surfaces, um, use a finishing pad, polishing, finessing, buffing pad. Dispenser, a lot of people, it's interesting all the wording and things like that, because some of this you have to know the terminology don't you because some people will think what the hell's a finessing buffing pad so they mean they're talking about a soft pad you know not an aggressive stiff pad or a you know a, a, even a wall pad you wouldn't use this on really although there's some softest finishing wall pads anyway get on with it john spread it evenly over the face of the buffer increase buffer speed gradually reduce pressure so go in hard and then ease up work area to desired finish Buff and removed dried residue. Great. So, um, and you can apply it by hand. Shake it, apply a small amount of rubbing the circular motion. Buff off dried residue, soft clean cloth. Keep. Yeah. So they're all the same, aren't they? You spread them on, buff them. Okay, it says use a liberal amount as well, but I've shaken it up. So look at this. Oh, this come, I love the way this comes out of the bottle. It doesn't fart out. Look, you can just control it. That's quite a lot for this small amount, but that's a great little thing. So that's a decent little bottle, that is. Uh, it's smaller, I suppose. It's got an advantage. Right, let's stick this on here. Right, and then one to spread, and then six to do. -y -do. 
Get on there. Right, go. One to spread. Okay, here we go. One. Much more translucent, this. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. I think that's six. I lose count. <laughs> I can't even count to six without ballsing it up. <laughs> I'm sure some of these will be like five, some of them will be like ten, whatever. It's only a rough thing. Okay, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, we've got the Adams on there. Let's just have a look at these Adams now. So that's lovely. That's dry, okay. We've got the Koch. Probably used a lot more Koch on the pad than the other products. This is still got an oiliness to it, which is interesting, isn't it? So this is a this is interesting. So that's going to be wet because I put excess product there. But even over here, where there's a thin layer of film, there's still an oiliness to it. Whereas the Adams is doing a sort of dry swipe. The Maguire's. Let's have a look at this. That's okay. There's still a little bit of wetness to it. So the Adams is the driest. Mind you, it's been on waiting the longest. Um, that's still got an oiliness to it. It's probably because you can work the crap out of that for ages. Um, and Maguire's is sort of somewhere in between. Poor Boys has gone really translucent. Really translucent. And um, just see how it feels. Still a bit of oil oiliness to it. So it hasn't gone bone dry. And then built hamber. That's a sort of excess footprint there. That's gone quite translucent as well. So you can see it's like that acrylic. That's gone dry actually. The main patchy haze of it. It's interesting. So like in terms of how they look on the panel, these two look the similar. The Megs is the most cloudy. Um, I'm going to just buff them in a second. And the Bright Max, that's very translucent as well. I think that's interesting. Yeah, that's drying quite quickly. They've got the big, those footprints there are going to just hamper things. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick up that footprint of excess product. Swip sides around so don't cross contaminate. Pick up that footprint of excess product. Change sides again. And pick up that footprint of excess product. Change sides again. Pick up that footprint. Okay. I'm just going to use another clean section to just take that off of that Maguire's. Right, let's put this cloth to one side. They're all wet. And now I'm going to buff the Adams with a clean cloth. We're going to just flip sides with this. I can get eight, how many? I need six sides, don't I? So let's buff the Adams. Here we go, the buffage. So just a gentle buffage. This is nice, man. These Adams products are good. You just, I've got, I'm just doing no pressure here. Just a gentle buff. And it just scoops up. And I can see, okay, so this camera is not going to really show you. So there's a sort of improvement. You can see the line where the product was, but it's not massively filled all these swirls. Um, I don't think it's a filler type product, really. I don't know. <coughs> I think it's more of a little mild abrasive that you sort of scrub, bring up a bit of gloss. So that hasn't done any... Um, miraculous filling but it was great to use totally not a single smear or anything like that it just scoops up on the microfiber nice product um, now let's flip this over so we're not cross contaminating okay let's go and scoop this kochi up that's buffed beautifully as well now what I think I can see 
is like a more noticeable channel of improvement with the Akachi just based on that line there then it sort of looks like a darker blue slightly and then goes back yeah definitely can you see that it's a slight angle but where my finger is is a decent amount of correction and as soon as I get over to here the amount of scratches goes through the roof so let's just try and do this a bit closer this camera is never going to show it so that's like kind of bad and slightly improved and then bad again there so the the Kochi abrasive on the machine has done a little bit more correction for my eyes than the Adams abrasive okay right both of them great to buff off the off of the panel um, finishing polishes shouldn't be difficult they're not the aggressive polishes generate more heat they stick to the paintwork more and can be harder to remove and you're taking off more debris and clear coat which when that dries in as well can be really hard and sticky to buff sometimes so these products should all be good to work with I've got a feeling they're all going to be okay they're all tested aren't they they're all been on the market for ages so not that many gaping holes in them but oh let's just turn this pad around change this over so I've got a clean side of microfiber Okay, the Meg's products dried. I think I can all that. There's a little bit of a footprint down there that's still wet. That was probably more to do with the pad, but this product again is just buffing really nice. It's a trademark of the Maguires. And that panel is looking good. Again, I knew that was going to smear because it was wet, but that's okay. That looks really good actually. So again, the channel, you just flip. Hold on a second. I'm trying to get my cloth. Do that and do that. There's my four new clean sides. Okay, so I've got four good sides again. That Meguiar's product looks like it's done a really good job. I can see running down there a line of and then like good clear paintwork don't get me wrong there's scratches but they're deep scratches and the haze haziness has gone out of the panel then i can see a line there and then the gap between the Koch and the maguires the paintwork looks a lot worse so i would say so far the Koch and the megs yeah definitely have done a better job with correcting so they're probably more abrasive or they feel better than the hand polish from Adams. What I'm seeing, it's all very informal. Right, let's go for the poor boys. So, okay, this is, I can barely see the residue, but there's the channel. It's very easy to buff. It's so nice to buff this is. Let's just feel these as well, guys. Let's just put this cloth down. feels like silk the poor boys feels better than the Maguire's That's those two sort of feel the same feels a bit bit grippier and the poor boys feels really silky but for me for me in my eyes you can't see what I'm seeing I've got better light here. We're moving away from the light. Should we get the, the uh, halogens out? But for me, the channel, like the difference, is less noticeable than the Megs and the Koch with the poor boys. It feels great though. I think it's got quite a lot of some sort of, you know, if it's acrylic or whatever. I don't know, but it, it's, it feels less abrasive to me and more kind of glazy I guess right that's the surface I've used let's flip that yeah <laughs> and we're gonna buff off the actually let's just give it fold this out just to make sure it's a fresh side right okay let's buff the built hamber it's buffing good it's buffing fine that's really good 
I can see the channel again guys which is what I'm looking for so that that's the buff so I've used that so I've got one more surface on the bottom can you see the channel where the BH is just over here there's like that blue channel again then when my eye comes across I suddenly see a line of like scratches and like imperfections on the surface here and a really clear channel and then again the imperfections there that's done a really good job I mean it's still scratched it's not perfect paintwork this paintwork needs heavy cutting as well so you could get this paintwork half decent um, but it's a good little test from these glazes you you can't see the light that I'm seeing but there's a good stretch down here with the built amber it feels lovely and smooth as well like the poor boys maybe that's a, a characteristic of the acrylic don't know but yeah that's good so far I would not pick any of these based on how they are to use they're all you put them on you buff them and you you buff them off and they're all fine to use when you're spreading them set after set over cars you might spot some little differences with dusting or them bedding down or something but from the little tests I've done it wouldn't make I don't think anyone would be that bothered right finally bright max so this is a really translucent product let's just get it so you can see the haze I'm just gonna right this is a bit harder to buff than the other ones I'll just feel it a little bit more which usually means the material is going to last longer this needs more buffing okay that's good definitely that ties in with my experience of silica primers they are very resinous that feels lovely and that's had a really good filling impact as well really good so I can almost see the channels, good paint, more scratchy paint, good paint. Not so much of an improvement with the poor boys. Bit of improvement with the Megs and the Koch and the Adams. It's harder to see. I can't see that channel with the Adams of, of the improvement so much. Have I learnt much with these products? Have I learnt much with these products doing this test? No, I haven't really. I haven't. Where, where I'm going with this at the moment is that I would probably, I'd be interested in the Bright Max because of its compatibility with ceramic coatings. So it's the only one of these that you could use with ceramic coatings as far as I know. I'm not sure. If you put a ceramic coating on pro on top of an acrylic based tan polish, if it's going to bond or not, if in doubt you put, put do bare bare surface prep, wouldn't you? But it will should bond on top of the Bright Max. <coughs> so that's the reason to use the Bright Max. Whenever I get products which I can feel a bit stiffer, they you dirty bastards I feel a bit stiffer. That tends to me to suggest that they're. You know going to be harder more durable resins um the adams one is really it dries the best and it probably buffs the best uh it's a very nice product to use and it will gloss the panel up but it hasn't corrected or filled quite as well as these four it's on the same level as poor boys from this this particular test um what am i taking away from this Koch, Koch, um, the thing with the Koch is, it's a wax in the, in here, and does that mean that I shouldn't use this product if I'm going to put a sealant down, because it's got a wax in it, so the wax is going to affect the sealant, so really this might have a limitation that you should really just use this, and that, your protection's in there, or you could put a paste wax on, um, so that's a thing. A question really with the Koch there's no doubt in the quality of their abrasives um, but I tend to use Koch for the H8 F5 and M2 pure abrasives that's what I want and then this product I'll have more as a kind of hand polish so at the moment I'm going to just rule a couple of these out I'm going to rule the Adams out I'm going to rule the Koch out because of the 
I'm not sure about the wax. <coughs> I'm going to rule the poor boys out. And I'm going to rule the Maguires out over price because I think this is 25 quid. Um, well, I don't know if I don't even know the price of these. Mind you, I know that the um, Maguires 3 in 1 wax is a really good hydrophobic protection as well on there, but I'm not sure about the durability. Um, you know, I'll probably I only really want to keep one. Oh, there's also the tax systems one that I've talked about before on the channel. No, the tax systems silica primer, the tax systems, yeah, total one essential. Um, very resinous product to use. This is really thick and stiff, but I think it stays on the car a long time, even though it's not that hydrophobic. I think it's a very resinous tack. Don't mess around with their durability claims, you know. Um, they tend to know more about it than kind of than I do, and we can't always measure durability. So, guys, <coughs> okay, guys, just a quick observation before I go. A little bit of water misted over helps reveal the kind of channel. I can see the channel a little bit more with that misting, but I'm not sure if you're gonna. You can just about see it on the camera. There's still less of a channel there. The Koch has a really noticeable channel of improvement there, and like the Maguire's has a decent channel, but it's not as it's not as good as the Koch. And poor boys Maguire's are virtually the same. The built hamber has a really noticeable channel. You can probably see it, can't you? So you can see the cloudy bit, and then like the channel of really good paint with the built hamber, and then the cloudy bit there as well. So that's probably got the best channel of clear paintwork, and then the hard to see it the bright max one is decent but i'm going to give it to the built hamber actually without just after i've misted it and then guys just on beading so if you want your product to kind of bead up as well it's definitely the mcguire's i've just got a, i've done so many of these spray on types of tests and i can just see the angle that it sits at Definitely the Maguire's is really hydrophobic. Poor Boys is all right. Bill Hammer's all right. That's not great, it's all right. But if you're after a hydrophobic hand polish out of all these, then it's the Maguire's. So I'll go back over now to the final summary of the video. But I'm probably gonna just keep the Bill Hammer cleanser polish um, and I'll keep that little sample of uh, Bright Max Virtue. All of them are good to use. The good thing with this is I can just, it fits in with my, all my built hammer products, my Auto QD and my double speed wax. If I was really minimizing what I was using to detail, I'd have all my little built hammer wash stuff for the car. I'd have all my little built hammer decontamination stuff. I'd still use TARDIS and that I'd keep. And you could argue really this should be over here because it's a descaler detail spray. And then really, I would just have the Built Hamber Cleaner Polish QD and the Built Hamber Double Speed Wax uh, Solution Finish. Um, o and R, Car Pro Pearl. Thing is, I'm, I'd always have the high temp paste wax for doing sealing exhaust and maybe alloys if you didn't want to use a ceramic coating. And then some of these are just products that I like as well that I keep. So. <coughs> that's it for this one guys let me know what hand hand polish hand glaze hand all in one you'd like to use the products that are supposed to be time savers that are supposed to do everything they all seem to contain milder abrasives um, from what what I see because if I hit these panels up I'm using a soft pad on that machine but if I hit these panels up with H8 or H9 or something like that I'd expect a little bit more correction with six passes up and down um, for sure. So there are limitations to what these products can deliver. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye for now.